we've covered all the stuff that I'm wanting to go with uh, for talk. Uh, I have a question for you. I want you to recap the, the, how you, uh, about the third vector, how you uh, decide whether it's, it's upwind or, or to the left of you or to the right. Like, when, when I flew with you, it, it, it seems like I, I feel a wind coming uh, uh, to me and then a small vector coming to, to the left and then you, you say, oh, it's upwind to the left. So, please uh, recap. On yeah, okay. <coughs> because also you say this is the most important part. Yes, it is. <coughs> well, the challenge is to... You know, one of the things that happens is, let, you know, let's say you have the average wind, and the velocity actually didn't change, but the wind direction changed. So using the third vector approach, and then kind of wish I had oh. I had a stick there. Yeah, right one. The wooden one. The the wait, the ah, the 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 one. The one of these things, yes. Oh, cool, multiple colors. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm not welcome to one. No, no, no. <laughs> Wind or something, 
uh, that's going to slow down and switch over to change over. So this is pointing that way for the third vector. We should be using different colors. Sorry. So this is the wind. This is what you feel. And this is pointing to the thermal. So the thermal's over here. So oh, actually, yeah. actually, you feel less wind in that direction, or yes, yeah. The reality is, for this, example, I feel I feel ten uh, uh, ten kilometer per hour wind. Ten meters. Per ten, hour. Uh, ten, no, ten kilometers because ten miles. Yeah, ten ten kilometers per hour. This length. Now, what you end up feeling? So that's the average wind. I should have been a doctor. <laughs> so, and then what you feel might be six kilometers per hour. What do you mean by what you feel? What is what you feel? You feel well, I'm standing there and I'm feeling the wind has shifted and slowed down. So the, the current wind is six kilometers per hour and it's changed direction. And I know by being on the field that the average wind has been 10 kilometers per hour from this direction. And suddenly it's shifting. Or, or it's, Start. Uh, well, the super quick changes is just turbulence. So what I'm looking for is changes that happen in uh, 10, 20, 30 seconds. Stable change. Yes. Kind of. Kind of, yeah. But uh, <coughs> I use uh, this third, uh, I'm, feeling the change in the wind. And one of the challenges is there's typically not just one thermal in the field, so you have a bunch of different thermals around. And so what you're feeling is actually the summation of all the different thermal influences. And sometimes there's a really big thermal far away that's pulling air in from all around, and you got little thermals nearby that and making quick, quicker changes. And so, yeah, you feel the overall vector is pointing that way, but the nearest nearest thermal I get to might be the other direction because you felt a change that happened over the last 10 seconds or 20 seconds, whereas for the last four minutes, the air has been pulled that way. I feel a small change, and I'll go for the local thermal. Uh, because she's closer. John, yes. In case of the, the average uh, wind were uh, zero, Kilometer per hour, so you would feel uh, uh, opposite opposite wind. Yes, because this is the influence of actually the. When, the, when there's no net wind, anything you feel is getting you know, pointing to a thermal. I see. That's interesting. Yes. <laughs> so where do you point the model? <laughs> start in this the, situation. Uh, yeah, in this particular situation, I know the thermal's there. And uh, so I'm aiming the fuselage there, and it's going to drift like this to some degree. So I'll probably intersect with the thermal here. So you let it drift? Down. You let the plane drift, not pointing in? Well, I point the fuselage straight at the thermal. So that tail. To the so, third vector. Yeah, so I'm, I'm pointing the fuselage straight at the thermal, but and if I was in the air, it's looking like I'm, if I'm in a balloon drifting with the wind, it's looking like I'm flying straight at the thermal. But from the ground, this standing on the ground, this thermal's drifting downwind. So the airplane's ground track is going to probably look like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm the intersected there. Feeling the Do you compensate for differences in airspeed versus altitude? Oh, how do you do that? Uh, because when we're reading the air, we're basically reading it at ground level. Yes. And the wind can be stronger, the can shift, can turn with altitude. I actually don't consciously pay attention to uh, <clears throat> redoing the integration there, but my guess is that uh, you now when I'm doing my <coughs> experimentation and learning the rules, as it were, uh, I'm subconsciously integrating that in. So it ends up being 
Yeah, uh, my third vector is pointing over there. I fly over there and there's the thermal. And all the details have already been integrated there. <coughs> so, because if, if you know, the wind change with altitude means that the thermal is in fact going to be, you know, you know, the vector is off by 10 degrees or whatever. Uh, then I go, go test and I find out I'm off by 10 degrees and I can actually update my, <coughs> my integration. So it ends up being that for whatever reason, <coughs> Your successful rules have adapted. How you estimate the, the distance from, from you to the thermal? That, that ends up being a function of the rate of change. So if the thermal is really big and really far away, so rather than it being here, it's way over here. It, this The time that it took to go from this strong to there is a function of how far away the thermal is. So if it's a thermal that's really close by and, and small, you, you feel the change go shh, shh. So the change happens quickly for a small thermal. And the only, the only way you even feel a small thermal is if it's close by. So you know, if the thermal's far, and if it's a small thermal far away, you never felt it, because its influence was pretty low. So you know, when a thermal's far away, the only time you feel it is when it's big, and you can tell it's a big thermal by the change happens slowly, and a small thermal, it happens quickly. So I, I use the amount of time that it took for the wind to change to understand <coughs> the distance. Joe, is it useful to use a streamer on our transmitter? Yes. I, is it it's, uh, pointing? Well, the, the streamer's telling you this thing. Okay. Okay. So I have to calculate. Well, eventually you end up not calculating. You it just is. Instinct. But yeah. When when you get to the instinct stage, you you have achieved it. Or another four school in my pocket. <laughs> yes. Yes. And those. There's a lot of times where I'll make a call and I have no idea why. It just is. <laughs> yeah, there are no squirrels in the world. <laughs> There's no squirrels in New Zealand, but... I'm thinking it's probably a break time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so.